we can see from here that these coefficients really depend on the intensities of the wave. Maybe we did not expect that, but essentially that's what they depend on. They depend on the ratios of the uh, intensities of the wave. And then we can also kind of resolve this matter by using what we have not used yet. We have not used our continuity conditions which I've given as that over there. Now, we kind of suspect that using the continuity equations, which we will know that it's two, two equations only. However, we have three unknowns, A, B, C. We will somewhat expect that we would write B and C in terms of A. Remember, because A is kind of like the intensity of the plane wave that is going to the potential set. That is what we started out with. Now, obviously, what gets reflected and what gets transmitted is dependent on, on the intensity of the wave that is incident on the potential step. And number two is that we see that we would maybe expect that R plus T is equal to 1. Okay? R is the ratio of the reflected beam to the incident beam. So if we add that with the ratio of the transmitted beam to the incident beam, we would get one over there like so. Now we can only expect this, but later when we do the mathematics, maybe this will come out nicely, right? So our objective right now is to use the continuity equations to really see what we can do about these uh, constants A and B. So if I were to apply the first one, continuity equations is quite easy to apply if you know, if you're, you're pretty familiar with, with the mathematics. Now, if I put zero inside the argument, right? So basically x is equal to zero and I'll evaluate that for both psi one and psi two. Continuity equations apply for psi one in this region, psi two in this region. What I will first get is uh, a plus b equal to c. As easy as that. As long as evaluated at x equals to zero, we know that the transaction numbers uh, become one. No, and that is also why, you know, if the if the step is either here or here, or we got some other potentials which changes at, at, at points when x is not equal to zero, things get a bit more confusing. Now, for the other one is that I need to differentiate the, the solution. So if I have to differentiate psi 1, I will get ik1a, okay, I'll get e to the um, ik1x, okay, I'll plus that with i K, sorry, minus i k1, and I'll multiply that by b e to the minus i k1 x, k1 x. Okay, so this is really the first derivative of psi 1. Let's just leave it as that. If I were to do the same for psi 2, I would get i k2 c e to the min, uh, i k2 x. All right, now, what I will now do is that when I substitute x equals to 0 into these two uh, first derivatives, I will just basically just elim uh, remove the, the, the transcendental numbers. Again, I say e to the 0 is equal to 1, and I'll get this over here. Um, let's just write it out in full. I will get a minus i k 1 b is equal to i k 2 c. Now, uh, two equations, three unknowns. Let's express b and c in terms of a. So this, let's go um, over here, and then what we will get is that b is equal to c minus a so i'll get i k 1 a minus i k 1 c and since it's a minus a i will plus because minus multiplied by minus i k 1 a is equals to i k 2 c i will just group these two terms together i'll get 2 i k 1 a and then it's equal to okay let me see that um yeah 2 i k 1 a this is a minus i k one c. Bring it over the other side. Plus i plus i k one c. So I get a c i k two plus a k one. Let me just check. Uh, k two plus a k one looks like that is correct. K two plus by a k one. Yep, that is. Now i is the common term, so I can basically eliminate that. And c is on this side. So if I were to just divide throughout by k one plus k two, I will get two k1 divided by k1 plus k2. All right, now we have expressed c uh, in terms of that. Okay, sorry, k, yeah, we got an a, that's correct. Now, I will just uh, substitute this back inside the first equation, and then what I would later get is that I would get b is equal to, okay, remember, b is equal to c minus a, so I will just bring out the a, c is given by that, so it's 2k1 divided by k1 plus k2 minus a 1 right minus a that would give me the k1 and k2 goes over here 2k1 minus k1 i will get a k1 and i'll minus a k2 divided by k1 plus k2a there we go the coefficient c and b is written in terms of a now what i can do is that now i can substitute this two back inside the reflection and the transmission coefficient so r is given now by uh maximum b squared divided by magnitude of a squared. So if I take the magnitude of that, square that, basically squaring the top and the bottom, 
Negative a squared will cancel out with this over there. So I'll get a k1 minus k2, and I'll just square that. And then I'll get a k1 plus k2, and I will square that. Quite easy. Our reflection coefficient. If I were to get the t is equal to, do the same for the t, I would see that I got this. Okay, again, take the same thing. The magnitude of, of c squared is also has a magnitude of a squared. That will cancel out with this, the denominator. However, I got a K2 and a K1. So I'll put a K2. The top becomes 4K1 squared, right? 4K1 squared. And I'll divide that by, let me see, uh, K1 and uh, uh, K1 plus K2 squared. And this, as you can see, is equal to K1 divides out 4K1K2 divided by K1 plus K2 squared. And there we go, our transmission and coefficient um, uh, coefficients. Now, what is really pleasant for us is that A gets eliminated when we calculate the certain coefficients. Now, you see, B is written in terms of A, C is written in terms of A. But when we take the magnitude of those two, we will divide by the intensity. And when we do that, they cancel out. So it's really good for us. You might have cracked under pressure, okay, because as you know, we would now need to write A in terms of something. Now, in our later problems, we find out that for some cases, we can use this normalizing condition to really write A, right? But then, we can't normalize because this is a continuous solution. It's difficult for us to normalize it. In fact, we can't. But it's okay because when we are dealing with the ratios, the A gets cancelled out. So now, we can now look at these ratios and really see what is this funny behavior. Now, I want to rewrite a few things. I want to divide throughout by K1. Now, you will see why in a minute. Now, if I were to do that, I'll get something quite nice, which is over here. Okay, I got it in my paper over here. Worked out the solutions, um, if I can find it. If I were to divide by k1 throughout, what I'll get is that I'll get r is equals to 1 subtract kappa squared and then it's divided by 1 plus kappa and you will square that. Alright, and then for the transmission coefficient, I'll get equals to 4 kappa divided by 1 plus kappa, right? Squared. Where kappa is equal to k2, sorry, yeah, kappa is equals to k2 divided by k1. So I'm just basically re-expressing these uh, reflection coefficients in terms of one, uh, one variable, which I wrote as kappa. Kappa is equal to k2 divided by k1, but we can use the, the constants k1 and k2 and rewrite this as the square root of 1 subtract by v not divided by e. Right? So now, now we are in business, okay? We can see, finally, what's this funny behavior, right? Now, Remember, I say again that this uh, reflection and transmission coefficients represent the, the ratio of the particles that get uh, reflected uh, to the, the, the particles that is incident. So we want to see really what we get from here. Now, again, classical mechanics tells us that this transmission coefficient is really equal to 1. All the particles get transmitted over.